Let me turn things to um, from Bhutan University. Uh, at first, we are give a brief background of this culture and uh, discuss the related work. Then I will present our method and uh, experiment results. Finally, I will give the conclusion. So actually, uh, drug discovery is, is a very classic problem. I think maybe most of you are more familiar with uh, in this topic than me because I'm from a computer science background. Uh, anyway, the uh, drug discovery is a very time consuming processing and it uh, usually maybe take more than 10 years to get a new drug. By chemical experiments are very expensive and uh, time consuming. Uh, in the recent uh, study, it found that maybe the cost doubles every nine years for one drug. Each year, maybe around uh, 20 drugs are approved by FDA. So we think uh, to using computational methods to help us to find in the new drugs to reduce the cost. A very uh, classic problem is to try to predict in the drug target interaction. This is a crucial process in drug discovery. It can be helped to find the drug action mechanism and uh, disease pathology, drug side effect, and also uh, used in drug repurpose. So this is a, a typical figure for predicting drug target interaction. There are three different uh, scenarios for drug target interaction prediction. For example, the new pair problem, it means the, the long drug and a long target, but we don't know if there are some new interaction between drug and the target. And there are also two other scenarios, maybe there are new drugs or new target. For example, here, this is a new drug. We wanted to predict the interaction between already exist target. There are some traditional tra computational methods. There's some traditional computational method, for example, target-based method. In this case, we need to load the structure of drug target and then using stalking or some other method to find the possible uh, drug. Anyway, but uh, uh, in this case, we sometimes, we, a lot of times, we don't have the structure for the targets. And it's also time-consuming, and we need a lot of computing, com computing resource. The other method is a ligand-based method. In this case, you will need to uh, load some long ligands and then try to modify the structure of the ligand. Most recently, machine learning-based methods have been proposed to tackle this problem. There are two different categories of machine learning-based method, feature-based method and similarity-based method. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of methods have been proposed. Uh, the all the similarity-based methods, they have some uh, uh, basic hypothesis. It means that if two drugs, they, they are, if they are similar, they may share the same target, or if there are two targets, if they are same, they may share the same drug. And uh, many methods have been pr proposed. There are some classic method. For example, the KN method. In, in this case, the we use the similar drug or similar target to get the prediction. And also for BMM method, we try to train the classifier for each drug and each target, and then get this result. Also, the lab RIS method is a kind of semi-suicide learning method. The WNGIP method is a kind of Gauss interaction profile killer. 
both the interaction matrix and the, the similarity matrix are integrated together to make prediction. There are also some feature-based method. In this case, a different type of drug and attack feature are used to train the classifier. Most recently, learning to rank method have also proposed to tackle this problem, and the in learning to rank, actually the problem is converted into a label ranking problem. Uh, here I give a brief introduction of learning to rank. In fact, there are a lot of different uh, supervised learning methods. The most uh, typical one is classification method. So it can divide the instance into different groups. And also in regulation problem, you try to position a value related to associated with uh, each instance. In ranking, learning to rank problem, you try to rank the input instance. There are many uh, typical ab applications for learning to rank. The most uh, maybe famous one is to try to rank the web pages in the uh, search engine. So here we have an example. Uh, for each query, we have a list of relate relevant web pages. We try to rank them according to the relevance. Given a different uh, queries and different uh, web pages, we use the learning to rank model to train a ranking function, and then give a new query, and the, the some web page will try to rank this web page according to their relevance. A um, lot of learning to rank methods have been proposed. They are roughly divided into three categories, point-wise, pair-wise, and list-wise. Here, I don't discuss the details. Maybe you can check the some related uh, work. Anyway, here we can also using learning to rank method to model the drug target interaction problem. For example, targets can be deemed as a query and the drugs can be deemed as a document. Then learning to rank method can be used to predict the drug target interaction. In this work, we focus on the uh, prediction of new drug or new targets because it's very challenging problem. Existing method doesn't achieve good performance. And also, we try to integrate different computation methods because existing prediction methods are from different uh, hypothesis and they are using different uh, kind of pre sample to design the models. So they are complementary to each other. Existing learning trunk method for uh, drug target interaction, they have some limitations. They focus on the small molecule screen. They only using drug and attack features, and also they use very small part of data to train the model. Here I dis uh, present our method. Here is an example using the new target. They are roughly divided into four steps. In the first steps, we uh, try to represent uh, the target and uh, drug as features. Also, we get the similarity between the, this new target and the, the existing target. We using the component method, the similarity-based method, then we can get some protein score from this component method, and then we uh, using all three set of features, and then we using the learning to method to make prediction. For example, the first step, we the features from some popular web server. And there are two set of features. One is drug features, the other one is target features. For similarity, we're using the, uh, um, also the most popular method to calculate the similarity. The target is based on the smith ottoman and the drug is based on the two-dimension chemical substructure. We then run the six component method. They are all uh, similarity based method to predict the score. And then we normalize the score. Finally, we have uh, 
three set of features, strong feature factor and target feature factor, and also the pair feature factor from the component method. We use lambda map method for training the learning track model because it is uh, uh, quite uh, useful in practice. And uh, then we uh, using the train the model to make prediction and get the rank list. So the use case of one method is uh, we treat the problem as a multi-level classification problem and uh, using learning rank to resolve it. We try to learn the complementarity among component method by ensemble, so also called a method ensemble learning rank. In this work, we combine similarity-based and feature-based method, and also we afford noise by only select a small <coughs> set of labels based on the component method. We uh, get the data from the drug bank database. We divide into uh, five data sets. For data one is uh, actually we get the uh, drug bank data that appeared before 2014 uh, March. And also uh, data two, data three are simulated uh, as the new drug and the new target data set. For data five is the experiment uh, drug. They are not officially approved. Here we also have some summary information for this data set. From this we can see the on average, uh, for example, for in data one, on average, the per target interaction there are more than four, and the uh, interaction per drug is also more than four, so it's uh, clearly a, a multi-label problem. We also notice that the distribution of data two, data three are different from data one because they are new drug and new target. Some uh, interaction are not discovered yet. And also data five is, uh, uh, also the interaction is rate is very low. We first uh, analyze the data set. We found that the data set is extremely sparse and unbalanced. Some drug or some targets, they have very uh, large number of interaction patterns. We also validated the similarity-based methods hypothesis. It means the, if they are, sim they are more similar, they tend to share same interaction pattern. In this case, we're using AUPR to uh, evaluate performance because instead of AUC, because AUPR, we are punished more uh, the false positive. This is important in biomedical studies. There are three different uh, experiment settings. The first one is we're using cross validation to check the performance. The whole data set one is divided into uh, five partitions and uh, we use three of them to train the component method. And uh, the fourth partition used to train the learning track method and uh, Last one is used to check the performance as a testing data set. And we we'll also uh, check the performance on independent data set using data two and data three. In this case, the component methods are trained in the data one. In the, in the data one is still divided into five parts, but uh, four of them used to train the component method and uh, Fifth one is used to train the learning track method. And uh, finally, we uh, make prediction on the data five, the experimental drug. Uh, we also did some uh, preliminary experiment to select the uh, number of labels from each component method. From this result, we can say if uh, there, there is a union of all component methods. We can say they are complementary to each other, so they can, the, the union of methods can find more labels. We also found that if you get more labels from each component method, the, the FMS will decrease because of the noise. So we choose 35 uh, predicting result from each component method. Here is the Cross validation result on data one. We run the 10 times five cross validations. 
the first part of the result are all from the independent uh, uh, component method, and uh, uh, we also run the uh, method based on the future using random force or GDPT on drug and target features only. For the drug E rank, we run three different uh, settings. The first is the setting we using both drug and target features, and the second setting we use only pair of features. And the third thing, we use all features. From each experiment result, we can find that uh, uh, for, for the drug E rank, the all, if we use all features, the result can improve a lot compared with the component method, especially for drug-based uh, method. And for target-based is uh, we have a 5% of uh, improvement. We also found that uh, using pair features are um, more effective than using the drug and target features. We also uh, using the uh, classification data set, uh, classification on data one to find, find the, to make new predictions that are not appear in data one, but later we can find that in the latest uh, drug bank. We found that, uh, for example, here is the, this is the uh, target-based uh, uh, method, and then uh, eight, eight out of top 10 are true. And also we found that the eight out of top 13 are also true for drug-based method. We then run the independent testing result on data two, data three, and data five. In each case, actually, the improvement is more significant. There are almost uh, uh, thirteen percent of improvements over the component method. Then we want to know why the uh, improvement. Uh, how the improvement achieved. So we using data one to check the complementarity of different uh, component method. So the data one is divided into maybe the five partitions and the four of them using to train the component method. And then the fifth part is uh, we check the performance of uh, component method. And then if the prediction is correct, then we draw the, the uh, draw the point on this figure and uh, it represents the rank of the competition method. If the point is close to diagonal line, it means two component methods that are very, perform very similar, but if it's far from the diagonal line, it means one method is much higher than the other one. From each figures, we can find that uh, there are different um, methods are actually very different. For example, here the, the red line or the yellow line, that means the new drug are only found by one method, not by the other. We also check the uh, performance on each drug or each target in data two and data three. We count the number of drug or targets which method uh, achieved uh, how many number of best position. We can see drug E rank perform best uh, in many individual drugs or targets. Here we also show an example result on, uh, on a drug and on a target. So we can see that the drug E rank can, can achieve the Correct result. For example, all needs are uh, the gold standard result. It means the drug E rank achieved the best result. But uh, for some component method, they, the rank are very low. It means the drug E rank can effectively integrate the different uh, component method. Finally, we can say the drug E rank uh, make great improvement by integrating uh, both stimulated based and feature based method using learning to rank. And there are 
uh, very large community among component methods. So need to study data and utilize the in drug e rank. We also found that there are some very low performance on experimental drug. We think it is because the, uh, there are a lot of unknown interaction in experimental drug. They are not yet discovered. So there may be some validate in the future. Uh, the work are mainly done by my graduate students, Xin Jun Yuan, and I also want to thank my collaborator, Dr. Sofa Zhang in Chinese Academic Science and the Professor Mamika Yitoso University. Thanks a lot for your attention.